Welcome back to the Startup Showdown podcast, where we discuss pitching, funding, and scaling startups. Join us as we interview winners, mentors, and judges of the monthly $120,000 pitch competition powered by Panoramic Ventures. We also discuss the latest updates in software, Web3, healthcare tech, fintech, and more. Now sit tight as we interview this week's guests and their journey through entrepreneurship. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Startup Showdown, and this is going to be a good one. Today on Startup Showdown, we have Tim Dorr with Techstars. Welcome, Tim. Tim, uh, before we get too far into this, can you uh, share with our listeners about the Atlanta rendition of Techstars? How'd you get involved with it, and um, what's your mission? How are you serving folks? Sure. Um, I'm the new managing director of Techstars Atlanta uh, in partnership with Cox, and i um, I'm going to be uh, managing the summer program coming up. Uh, I'm taking over for uh, Dave Payne, who was the previous managing director. Um, it's a generalist program. We're not really focused on any verticals or markets. Um, really, what I'm hoping to do with the program, though, is find some more brand names for the Southeast. Um, it's definitely a big focus for me is to... Uh, I've had a lot of success uh, through the uh, Atlanta-specific uh, startup ecosystem, um, and I'm sure we'll get into that in a bit. But um, in having my own success, I want to see more success stories out there. Um, it's kind of my own personal thesis to go create you know, <laughs> a dozen more copies of me um, in whatever way makes sense for them. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be financial. But um, I want to do that through Techstars and... Really, what I want to do in particular is find some of these like large brand name companies, you know, uh, kind of think like the ones we've already had success with here in Atlanta, like uh, MailChimp, uh, Greenlight, Calendly, uh, like everyone knows them. Um, <clears throat> you know, they're such strong brands and they're really something we can rally around in the Southeast to draw the attention here that like we're as viable a startup hub as the the coasts like you don't have to go out to the bay area or la you don't have to go out to new york uh there's another option where the culture the talent the resources the geography everything is just so perfectly aligned to create amazing startups in um and i just want to use more of these brand name companies that can come out of Techstars as you know flags we can plant in the sand to really get the attention of folks to like, hey, come out here. There's something, something going on here. Um, so that, that's what I'm looking to do with the, um, the Techstars Atlanta program. Um, and actually, like how I got into the role was actually through a former managing director, Michael Cohn. Um, I was talking with him uh, just about general investing stuff, uh, him and Sean O'Brien, who run uh, Overline. And uh, they were just giving me some advice on that on that front. And Michael just mid-conversation had an idea, said, hey, would you be interested in the MD role at Techstars? And I kind of paused for a second and said, sure. And then that kicked off uh, an email that kicked off a whole interview process. And here I am. Now, what are some of the qualities that those Atlanta-based brands that uh, you were holding up have in common that uh, other kind of... Uh, aspiring or emerging brands can either emulate or model themselves after? Um, I mean, it definitely in like MailChimp's case, um, there's a really strong just brand name to MailChimp. Um, if you remember that, uh, that serial podcast from um, several years ago, there was a, a, an advertisement for MailChimp at the front of it. And they did this kind of like man on the street interviews with folks and some lady was reading off a card and didn't know how to pronounce MailChimp. She pronounced it as MailKimp. Um, and that kind of became a little meme for a bit. But what was funny about that in particular was that even though she mispronounced the name of the company, everyone still knew that she was talking about MailChimp. And it was just that kind of like pervasive, strong brand that, you know, is of the same caliber as like, you know, like Disney or Coca-Cola, like, you know, these incredibly strong brands that like can cut through even like a mispronunciation um, to get people's attention. 
Um, I, I really think something like that is amazing that, uh, you know, Ben and Dan have created over at MailChimp in particular. Um, so there's definitely like the branding aspect of it. Um, and then really leveraging some of the unique uh, properties of the Southeast. I mean, we have amazing talent here. Um, you know, th there are a lot of like really talented folks to work on things. Um, you know, I, I know watching uh, Tope build out Calendly over at Atlanta Tech Village because um, we were cohabitated there uh, alongside Salesloft, uh, which I'm a co-founder on. Uh, like watching him kind of make use of these amazing folks to like really build out a really strong company, um, which didn't take that many people to really reach the like pervasive level of being the de facto standard for, um, you know, online scheduling. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's pretty incredible how, how little it took to, to get to that worldwide success that they have now. Um, and, you know, they've grown quite a bit since then, but um, now, yeah, it's, it's definitely making use of those unique resources that we have here. Now, do you think that we have the density that the uh, coast might have where a person works in a startup and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go the way they planned and they can just jump to another startup and, and not kind of abandon this startup dream? Yeah, I mean, there's so many opportunities for, you know, in particular, like, the way I look at um, Techstars now coming into it is that we're a piece of a larger puzzle. We're not an island by which there's a silo of activity happening and it's amazing for Techstars, but not amazing for anyone else. There are definitely uh, programs and resources out there. Um, you know, we have hubs like Atlanta Tech Village, like I mentioned, um, ADDC at Georgia Tech. Um, and you know, at, at ATDC, there are various accelerator programs there. Like I, I'm not viewing them as competitors. I'm viewing them as being a piece of the puzzle. Um, like you might go over to ATV and do the, it takes a village, um, pre-accelerator program as kind of a, a starting point to figure some things out. And then kind of, as you start to get the business going, you come over to me and go through tech stars. Um, and then maybe you have like a very enterprise specific play, or you could make use of that. You go over to engage, um, and Blake Patton's program over there where they, uh, partner with various, uh, fortune 50 companies in the, um, Southeast here in Atlanta. Um, and you get access to like the C-suite of like Chick-fil-A and UPS <laughs> and, um, Home Depot, uh, these like incredibly large companies, you get direct access to the very top of it. Um, th these are all components which come together to um, really create a unique opportunity to create a startup. So there's just so many opportunities to, you know, if, if you go through one, it doesn't work out, like you can get back on the, the horse and try again, um, whether it is either starting another thing yourself or joining one of the, the many, many, many startups that exist in the Southeast. Um, you know, it, just seeing the amazing opportunities that we have here, um, you know, there's, there's so much that you can get involved with very directly, very easily. Now, if you were to uh, kind of create a startup ecosystem from scratch, uh, what are the elements that we're lacking here in Atlanta? Um, I mean, the things that were lacking previously were uh, particularly capital, but that's actually been fixed. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, the, the sponsor Panoramic, uh, they're a very large fund that has uh, established itself in the Southeast. Uh, I mentioned Overline earlier. There's Outlander, uh, TechScore Ventures. Uh, I'm blanking on others. Unfortunately, I'm under the gun here. Uh, I do know a lot. Uh, the, I think the if I if I remember the numbers correctly, I believe a billion dollars of new capital came into Atlanta last year. So um, there is you know, a lot going on here that we have in terms of resources. Um, really what's happened in Atlanta over the past, say, decade um, has been a transformation of the startup ecosystem from being a bunch of people kind of hanging out, wanting to do something to being, uh, you know, a functioning, well-structured uh, machine that just spits out great startups. Um, and in particular, it's starting to feed back into itself. And you have, you know, the leaders coming out of these amazing companies that are doing, you know, amazing things. So, like I mentioned, Tope and uh, Ben and Dan at MailChimp. 
um, Kyle Porter at, at Sales Loft. Um, you know, they're starting to, because they've had success, um, and I humbly include myself in this, um, you know, that feeding back into that ecosystem is starting to create that exponential growth where, you know, a dozen people come out of it in one cycle, contribute back, whether that's in just time or capital or whatever, um, back into that ecosystem to help it continue to grow. And then, you know, a couple dozen people come out and then a couple hundred, and, you know, it, it starts to really feed back on itself very quickly. Um, and we're starting to see that like first cycle really happen. So, yeah, I mean, like, I feel like the disadvantages are, are kind of gone at this point. It's really just us continuing to hone and um, operate that machine that we've established here um, and continuing to just grow, grow, grow. Like we're essentially Atlanta is a growth stage startup now. We are no longer in the, the product market fit. We figured it out. Um, now I just need to continue to scale up. Now, how do you feel we're doing when it comes to um, underserved founders or founders from underserved groups? Um, it, there's definitely a lot of work to be done there. Um, and I, I feel like we've been making great strides on that. Um, it, it, for tech stars, at least, I can definitely speak to the fact that it's something we care a lot about. Um, and it's not so like we're not trying to hit numbers here. Like that's not the goal here. The goal is that we're trying to fundamentally change how we source startups so that we can find those founders who are not being seen. Um, cause it's just, frankly, it's an injustice that we're not doing that. Um, because they're like, every time I run into somebody and they've never talked to anyone before, or they, they've only just figured out that there's a startup ecosystem here. Um, and they're, they're not getting seen by anyone. They have great ideas. They have really good ideas. Uh, and they have a ton of drive and passion. Like they absolutely want to get it done. Um, like I, I was talking with one startup who, uh, it's her first time doing anything. Uh, she's figuring everything out, uh, from scratch and she was just a teacher last year. Um, you know, she is brand new to this entire world. Um, and is somebody that may have gone overlooked um, in the past very easily um, and wouldn't have gotten access to the resources that she needs to get the help um, to move forward uh, as a founder in particular, but also for her particular idea. And um, yeah, I mean, for, for Techstars, it's important that we're establishing systems where we can, uh, you know, make sure we are both finding the kind of um, founders that are not getting seen yet, and we're encouraging those uh, founders to come out of the woodwork a bit and uh, reach out to us. Like we wanna make sure we're being welcoming as well. Um, we definitely have a lot of um, interest in, you know, whether it's race, uh, gender, uh, age, um, you know, disability status, veteran status, things like that. Um, <clears throat> we want to make sure that we're we're being as accommodating and welcoming for those kinds of founders as possible, so that they don't have to have like as much as the the startup ecosystem may have biases against them. They also have biases against us, which are well deserved, and we want to make sure we're breaking those down as well, so that they can feel welcome um, and included in the process. It's it's definitely about inclusion and making sure that they have a seat at the table too. And I think it goes along with what you said earlier about having those brand names. If we can get um, the companies that are from underrepresented folks that have kind of working towards a brand name or have a brand name to show what is possible and that they can aspire to do this, this is a, this is a dream that can come true and open their minds to this as a career path, I think uh, that would help out as well. Absolutely. Now, um, what part of this process gets you fired up? Like, what do you enjoy uh, about working with these early stage folks that, uh, you know, gets you up in the morning, gets you excited to do what you do? Um, it's definitely about, um, you know, like the best founders that we have come through the door are the ones that are most amenable to change and the ones that want to uh, learn and grow. And I love really like 
<clears throat> connecting with them on that level and helping them see maybe something from a different angle um, and a different perspective. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, not instructing them to do something per se, um, you know, just exposing them to another way of thinking. So like, uh, one thing I always say about um, tech stars in particular is that like, well, we're called an accelerator, quote unquote, um, we are actually going to slow you down for three months. And that's because we're asking you to, for those three months, really step off the gas of like the build, build, build mode of the startup, because chances are you have your blinders on, you're, you're headed towards a target. You want to just hit that target no matter what. And, you know, if the thinking is, if you get to that target, everything will be great. That's your success point. Um, and usually that's not true. Um, usually you need to course correct as you go, but it's really hard to do that. That's a skill that takes a lot of learning, a lot of, uh, a lot of failure to figure out that like, that's something you have to do. So what Techstars is going to do is, you know, really force you to break down that assumption. And, um, you know, th that's definitely where I can help the most is, um, you know, kind of structurally how we do it is we have a very mentor based program. And one thing we do up front to connect you with mentors, we do this thing called mentor madness. And it's basically a week long process. You're meeting with all 100 mentors that we have. You're doing these quick 15 minute meetings. Um, they are just the most raw, honest, objective uh, feedback you'll ever get in your company. There's no time to defend yourself. So you just got to listen and write things down as fast as you can. Um, and you're going to hear a bunch of stuff. Some of it will be complete crap and, you know, bad advice. But you're going to start hearing a lot of like the same thing over and over again from like, you know, 10 different people in a row. And that forces you to start to say, hey, I keep hearing the same thing that maybe I need to be doing this thing that I haven't been doing in my business. And that can start to break down that that stubbornness barrier of like, I think I know the right direction and, or I think this target is where we should be headed um, and really start to think think about things differently for your business and realize maybe there are different perspectives on what I'm doing. Um, and then we pair you with your mentors and the ones that really resonated with you on that are the ones that are going to help you the most. And we run through the program. Um, and really the acceleration comes after the program where, um, you know, the demo day is over, you're kind of back to normal and you want to, uh, step back on that gas, but now you have a plan in place, you know, you're headed in a better direction. And you have that skill set to be able to stop and take a take a moment to say, okay, maybe we're not headed in the exact right direction. Let's course correct a little bit to the right. Um, and you have your mentors. Like the the one thing I will point out is like the mentors are mentors for life potentially. Um, you know, we definitely encourage that the, it's not just limited to those thirteen weeks. And then we take them back. Like these mentors are mentors you can have forever, um, and they can be advisors to your company. They can be investors in your company even. Um, you know, th these are definitely like long-term relationships and you have them as a way, to, as a sounding board, potentially to say like, Hey, are we actually headed in the right direction here? Or does your kind of opinion differ and suggest that we should do something differently? Um, <clears throat> so kind of going back, like th that's where, like, I definitely prefer to help is when somebody comes in and says, Hey, I, th is this the right direction to go in? Um, or do we need to course correct and kind of working through with them, like to figure out, okay, what is a better strategy here? Or what is a, an adjusted strategy? Uh, or maybe we just need to pivot entirely and do something different. Um, you know, kind of working through those challenges are definitely the most engaging for me. Now, what's the biggest piece of advice you can share with a startup founder to e even enter the Techstars program? What do they have to, what's something actionable they can be doing today that'll give them a shot of getting in into the Techstars program? Um, I'd definitely say uh, be considering, um, you know, again, kind of like doing this like course correction work um, comes down a lot to really being good at customer discovery. Uh, there's a very good book on this topic called The Mom Test. Um, it's actually written by a local uh, Atlanta native. Um, I forget his name off the top of my head. But um, it, it's like 10 bucks on Amazon. It's a really quick read. Um, it's very practical in its nature. Like that's the one thing I like about it. It's not very like theoretical about customer discovery. It gives you like actual talk tracks um, that you can like see both the, the things to ask and why to ask them and really like 
all customer discovery about is about is discovering what is the problem space that your customer lives in. Like, what are their issues? What are they dealing with? Um, you know, kind of like working through that sort of thing. And um, if you're doing a lot of customer discovery, that's great. Um, I'd love to hear that, like, you're talking with dozens or hundreds or maybe even thousands of customers um, to really understand what is going wrong in their world. And you really strongly understand their problem space. Because that will just help you long term, like as a business, when it gets to like selling mode, when you switch to the other side of, of things, because you understand the the problem space so well, you understand where they are, where their headspace is at. You can, when you sit down to sell them, you're not selling from the other side of the table. You're selling on the same type, side of the table as them. You're, you're selling alongside them rather than to them. Um, so I love to see that kind of like, that's like, to me is attraction metric. A lot of people come to Techstars and say like, well, how much revenue do we need? Like how many customers we need? Like, no, that's, that's actually not the issue. Techstars is really wide open when it comes to the, the stage your company's at, like anything from a back of the napkin idea up to like, I'm about to raise my like second or third round of funding, um, <clears throat> you know, and anything in between. So like what matters more to me is just like when it comes to traction, quote unquote, it's not so much the the revenue numbers. It's like how much uh, have you connected to your your market space, and are you like actively working through talking with customers, understanding their needs, and like setting yourself up for that kind of success when it comes to selling and actually obtaining customers. Because um, if you don't understand your customers, maybe you have some revenue, but that might have just been dumb luck that got you that revenue. Um, you know, if you're actually listening to them, getting feedback, getting input, then the traction you have is more real in my mind. So I, I definitely look at like the kind of like work you've done to really understand your market in particular. Now, if somebody wants to learn more about the Techstars program, uh, what's the best way to do that? Um, I mean, you can head to techstars.com. Uh, we have, I think it's roughly 50 different uh, programs. Uh, we actually have a, a second program now in Atlanta as well. Um, Melissa Pegas is the new managing director of the Techstars Atlanta powered by JP Morgan program, um, which runs um, opposite of mine. So I mine runs in the summer. We also have the uh, Cox Social Impact program that runs in the winter. Um, and then uh, Melissa's programs are running in the essentially the fall and the spring. So pretty much 24 seven, there's something tech stars going on in Atlanta. Um, and if you want to learn about any of those head to techstars.com, you can uh, go to the accelerators page. Um, and one thing that that's really great there is that like, you can start to look through all the programs we offer. Some of them are city based. Some of them are uh, remote programs like tech stars anywhere. Uh, some of them have corporate partners. Some of them do not. Uh, some of them have a focus, like there's a, a physical health accelerator in Fort Worth, Texas. There's energy tech over in Birmingham. Um, some of them have, you know, a particular, you know, it may be a, a you know, specific market that you're in that you can get a lot of value out of. Um, like, uh, you know, my summer program is very generalist. But um, if you go out to L.A., Matt, who runs the program out there, he has a, a space uh, technology um, focus for one of his programs. Um, he's actually running four, and he's kind of nuts for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we love him. He's, he's, uh, we're lucky to have him. Um, and I definitely would, like, look through all the accelerator programs we have, um, mainly when, like, evaluating, like, a Techstars accelerator. You definitely have to look at the, the resources being provided by that program. Um, and there are going to be a bunch that are just not in fits entirely, um, but try to find ones that are close and like really examine them. Um, and I would definitely encourage anyone who's interested in Techstars to apply to multiple programs at the same time. Uh, there's no disadvantage whatsoever for doing so. And on top of that, you just have more chances. Um, again, we have hundreds of applications for Techstars Atlanta this summer, um, and I'm only choosing 10 companies. So the, the chances of anyone getting in is fairly low. Um, so the more programs you apply to, the more chances you have. Um, and who knows, you might find one in there that you resonate with more than my program. 
uh, for whatever reason, maybe you like the MD more or the corporate partner is a better fit for you, uh, whatever it is, uh, I'm not offended by that, by the way, so <laughs> feel free to, to find the, the best program that works for your team and your needs. Um, but yeah, uh, consider them all and uh, definitely apply to any that makes sense. Uh, just the more chances you have to uh, get into a program, the better. Yeah. Like you said, there's a lot of resources now uh, compared to, you know, 5, 10, 15 years ago. So take advantage of them. Yes, absolutely. Well, Tim, thank you so much for sharing your story today. You're doing important work and we appreciate you. Thank you. Definitely appreciate it. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on Startup Showdown. As always, thanks for joining us and don't forget to follow and subscribe to the Startup Showdown podcast so you get the latest episode as it drops wherever you listen to podcasts. To learn more and apply to our next Startup Showdown pitch competition, visit showdown.vc. That's showdown.vc. All right, that's all for this week. Goodbye for now.